Hey everyone, welcome back to Insider Guides where we help international students who want to come and study in Australia. Today's video is for those international students that want to understand accommodation options. There are essentially four main types and in this video I'm going to go through the positives and the negatives of each of them. Okay, so the most common option for international students is to go the, the way of private rental. Now that means you have taken out a lease on a property uh, either by yourself or you're sharing it with other people. A private rental also includes uh, access to communal areas such as a bathroom, the kitchen, and uh, you'll each have your own room uh, and that's a little bit different to other countries where you may have roommates. In Australia that's not so common to have people sharing the same room, it's more common to actually have your own room. Okay, so there are a few negatives when it comes to private rental. The first one is that you are now responsible for your own bills. And I mean things like electricity and gas. And then if you add in the complexity of sharing those costs with your housemate, it can get a bit difficult. The other thing is furniture. If you're coming from overseas, you may actually have to buy a whole new bunch of furniture. Whereas in some of the other accommodation options, you may already have a furnished place. The other point is that living with housemates may not be something you're comfortable with because some housemates aren't great people to live with. Uh, you may have different standards in regards to mess or noise or respect for private spaces and they may, that may not be something you want to do. Another issue is distance. Some private rentals are a little bit of a way from where you actually need to be every day, such as your, your institution. And if you have to commute 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, then that's something worth considering. Uh, is that actually something you wanna do? Because you might actually find that it's better to just rent in the city. So we'll have another video on the questions that you need to ask before you enter into a private rental agreement, as that can be a little bit tricky as well. Okay, so the next option we're going to look at is managed student accommodation. Now these are facilities that are managed by a company and they're usually located quite near an institution. You may have your own room or you may have to share with a roommate, but that's your choice as well. And almost always these places are fully furnished, so you don't have to worry about getting your own furniture. Okay, so there are a few positives living in a managed student accommodation facility. Uh, the biggest one is that it's very convenient. If you want to live near where you study, this is the option for you. It's also extremely safe. There are lots of facilities inside these places, things like gyms and study rooms and cinema rooms. Uh, there's also a lot of people there, so you have a, a great sense of community while you're there. You'll be sharing that facility with lots of students. There's also free Wi-Fi as well. Negatives, it can be a little expensive, or it can be more expensive than private rental. And the rooms are usually pretty small, something between 16 and 20 square metres. And if you are coming to Australia to immerse yourself in Australian culture, some international students prefer to steer away from managed student accommodation because often those places do house a lot of other international students. However, some students love that as well. So it's really up to you. Okay, so the next option we're gonna look at is residential colleges. Now, this is probably your more classic style of university dorm accommodation. Often they're either on campus or they're quite near campus. They often have a sense of community and a club culture. So if you do live there, you'll probably be encouraged to join a sporting club or an academic club or something like that. Now, there's a few positives for this. The location again is always quite good. Uh, you're probably very, very close to, your, to where you need to study. The bills are covered in your weekly rent and so are the meals, which is a huge one. So you'll be eating with other students, there's a big kitchen and everyone eats at the same time. That's, that's really cool. There's also lots of extras like gyms and libraries and, and you get a weekly room clean. Okay, so there are a few negatives as well. It can be a little expensive because you have, you're, you're paying for an inclusive cost. Uh, including meals and weekly room cleans and things like that. That's not for everyone. Uh, the culture, is, no, it's not for everyone. Uh, some students feel that it's a little old fashioned. Uh, they make, some, some colleges make you wear uniforms and eat together and things like that. That's not for everyone. And also the rooms uh, aren't always uh, in the best shape. Okay, so the final option we're gonna talk about 
is homestay. Now here, you'll be living with a family in Australia. And it's a popular short-term option for some international students, uh, mainly because of the cultural value. I mean, you will be living in someone's house and, and you'll be getting an experience that other international students won't because you'll have this extra level of support. Now, that's one of the positives, but then, uh, and, and there's a few more positives as well, such as the meals and the bills are completely included in, in one cost. Uh, you also have a fully furnished room and you'll get that extra support that other students won't. So that they might help you get the right bus or, or help you find some places that that other students don't know about, which is quite cool. Some of the negatives, uh, you might be craving a little bit more independence and you might not get along with the family you're living with. Another negative may be that the house you're living in might be a bit of a distance from your institution. If you're interested to know how these accommodation options change in price, uh, depending on which city you choose, head to insiderguides.com.au and have a look at our cost of living calculator. While you're there, there's plenty of articles to help you make a better decision about which accommodation option is right for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got a lot out of that. And please like this, share it and subscribe. Thank you so much.